Hello, it's Paul, and welcome once again to another episode of Paul Plays Shenzhen I.O. And this episode, we're going to be doing this puzzle, the Diagnostic Pulse Generator. So, let's have a look at what we need to do. Obviously, here's our main circuit board. We have one input, which is a button. Um, this is going to be our output called Pulse. Button is a simple input connected to a button. Pulse is a simple output connected to an electronic device. When the button is pushed, generate pulses as indicated in the verification tab until the button is released. So the button obviously here is going to start low and when it goes high, i.e. when someone pushes the button, we need to start generating these one cycle pulses. And when the button goes low again or is, is not pushed, we stop generating them and start, keep doing it like this. So, simple enough by the looks of things. Um, and here on the right hand side now we can see all these lovely parts. Some of them are not recommended, so I presume that's the way the game is saying, like, no, don't use them yet. But just quickly look at what we actually have. We have... This is the little CPU we had in the last puzzle. It's an MC4000. It has, as we thought, said before, five, six, seven, eight. I think the, the manual does say, but it has nine, we can put nine lines of code into this to delete it. But delete doesn't work or anything. The only key that I've seen does things is the, uh, the what's it said down here? Show wire, the tab key. sort of blanks out or gives you a sort of transparent view of your pieces and the R key just hides the profile. To get rid of the piece, throw it back over there. And right clicking seems to get rid of the traces you've put on the board. It seem, doesn't seem to be like a clear the entire board type command. And now we have this, the MC6000, which I think the manual said had 14 lines of code and a second register. So where we normally had accumulated the first one with a second register called DAT, which is which I think the manual said was almost exactly the same as accumulator. Maybe there are some operations which don't work on it, but in, in general, anything you can do with an accumulator, you can also do with a DAT. It looks like they may have got rid of that swap mechanic out of TIS-100, which to be honest, like it made things tricky and made you think about things, but it, eh, it wasn't my favorite. But you know, it was part of the puzzle, so why not? The other thing though, even though this looks nice and meaty, it has still only got two of these P um, pins, which connect to the standard outputs. And the rest of them are these X, these X bus ones. So it has extra, whereas it has two extra pins compared to the 4,000. But those pins are X bus pins, not so we'll see if we can get away with using the smaller one for this puzzle. The other thing we have here are these bridges, which I think sort of allow you to bridge between bits of trace. Um, possibly useful later on, but I don't think so now. Again, can't seem, no, seem to be delete, but we can just drag it and throw it away from there. So get this wired up. So the important thing from looking at the manual is that the way the kind of conditional branching if statements are changed quite dramatically to something which, I mean, I've coded in a lot of programming languages in my life from like assemblers to COBOL to Lisp to Smalltalk, many, many C, C++, Pascal, and all the modern sort of JavaScripty. VB, C sharp, Java itself type type things, you know. So, but what it seems to do is it has a quite a strange way of doing its if statements, and we'll look at that here. So there's TEQ, is it? Yeah, test if equal P zero, and let's say one hundred. So what that that's saying is test test if the following two things are equal. So have a look at what's currently stuck on P0, which hopefully is either 0 
or 100. Oh look, control click to toggle breakpoints. So it has a kind of, oh debugger. That's good, okay, that is handy. Hadn't spotted that before. So you can do control click here and set a breakpoint so that when the simulation gets to that point, it'll stop. So that's, that's lovely. Anyway, so back to having over this strange and weird and wonderful. Now normally then in Assembler and TIS, you'd be doing things like JNE, jump if not equal. JEQ, jump if equal. And you'd put labels, label here, maybe do this, move something to somewhere type stuff. This has a different way. I think you can still do it that way, but it uses, you prefix your instructions with plus and minus. Now, what is that doing? So an instruction, so once you do a test of equal, it kind of sets, and if you look at like old or modern, or all CPUs, they, once they do a test statement, they will set a test bit or a test state within the chip. And so basically, if you prefix an instruction with a plus, see the way it pops there, because it's doing its nice order formatting of code for us. It's saying that this line, whatever we type here, will only be run if the test is true, like it worked. And the alternative is minus will only be done. This, so whatever's on this line. So you can write code that looks like, you know, that is the minus bit, and that would be the plus bit if you get what I'm saying. So it, it kind of means you can write code, which looks, it takes a little while to sort of get used to reading. But once you've got it, it, it involves not having to do all these labels and jumps. So, if minus, so like we've tested, have we got 100 coming in on this button? So anything I put a minus will be, no, we don't have, 100. We have something else. Now, in this case, it'll be zero, but we don't really anything but 100. So if it's not, what we want to do is move zero, oops, zero to P1. So if, if it's, um, if it's, <coughs> excuse me, yeah, if we got zero on the bottom, the only thing we want to do, and we want to sleep one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put a minus on the sleep one because the sleep one is always going to be done. So what happens if you put a plus statement here? So this line will, so it'll, it'll do this. It'll, so if it's true, if it's a hundred, well, it'll see this line and go, no, I'm not doing that line. I'm just going to skip it. It'll come to this line, but it's got a plus. The test bit is set. The last test, the last comparison statement we did got a true so I'm going to run this line so in this case what I want to do is start out putting this pulse and what I'd like to do is use the accumulator to kind of remember the state and there is another instruction in the manual called not which flips the accumulator I believe a hundred and zero is what it flips between what it flips if it's 50 we can have a look at or some other non if it's some number if it's zero it goes to 100 if it's 100 if it goes to zero if it's like 87 some some other value i think that's true to the same as zero it'll go to 100 we, we could we could do a quick check on that it does say in the manual i've just just it, it's like the old true and false zero one c all that kind of good stuff again so move zero to p1 if it's not true, if it is true, we want to move. So let's say the accumulator will have zero in it. So the very first thing I want to do is not the accumulator. So not just takes the value in the accumulator. And as I said, if it's zero, it makes it 100. If it's 100, it makes it zero. And again, this line, so this is kind of the branch of the code. I mean, imagine we kind of opened an if well, norm if else, but we've actually put the else kind of bit above it, which probably is not great programming practice. Maybe I'll change that. But basically, you know, like squiggles in C, you know, this code here with the pluses is all run if the statement was true, and the not minus code is run if the statement is false. And I've just, for pure awkwardness and silliness, put the else kind of not true part at the top. But anyway, let's go. So move accumulator to P1. And that, well, it could be it. We could have a problem that that the last, whatever the last bit of the accumulator has been, we could remember it. So let's just see what happens. It's looking good, looking good, looking good. No. 
here we've had a problem and I'm pretty sure that is because it's gone up but we've left yeah see if we look at this the last thing that accumulated it was down it was down but this one kind of stopped this batch of pulses stopped on a high note or high note <laughs> a high signal <laughs> and therefore when it came to this it flipped it and got a low but but when you start pulsing, the very first item of a pulse has to be high. So as soon as the button is pressed, we want to go high straight away. We don't want to go low straight away, and we don't want it to be dependent on what the last pulse we output it on. So I believe the way we're going to stop that is whilst we're finding a minus, we're always going to make the accumulator zero. And that will mean that whenever we get into this, like as soon as we ever get a pulse, the accumulator is zero, so the very first thing we do is we not, therefore we knock it high. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, that looks pretty pretty good at this stage. So it's just a matter of keeping track of the accumulator. See, that's quite clever, the little... I actually have a game. It's nowhere near as good as this, but I was... Practicing Lua programming using a system called Love or Lerve or it's got German omelets over the O. So we're quite high on power usage. It's obviously quite possible to get it done with a much lower power. I wonder, but the production cost is quite nice. I wonder is that this, in theory, we don't need to. We only need to do that in a very specific case where we go. Well, it's done. Like I said, like I'm not going to try at this stage. It's the second puzzle again. I'm not going to try and um, go into them in massive detail to try and get absolutely the lowest thing. So, anyways, that's that's done. The only thing I just want to quickly do is just have a look at this. You can select code. You can do Control X. Control V, so you can do, you've got kind of Control C, Control V, Control X, copy, paste, cut, copy, paste. Um, before I say that's going to work, I'll just make sure it works. Yes, so we, as you've seen here now, what I've basically done is just, I've just shuffled the pluses and the negative around. So you could, if you're familiar with bra braced programming languages, like any like Java or JavaScript, you know, if you read this as if P0 equals 100, open bracket do that else do that and it's done in a far i like this syntax i have never seen it now i you know i checked on wiki or somewhere about the history of programming languages i guess i'd probably find that people have used this that there are some programming languages use something like this or maybe zactronics have invented it if so very cool um i do like it does kind of make it it's, it's easier to read than the TIS style of doing this with JNEs and jump if equals and putting labels in we're just testing this is the yes the test was equal and what you could actually do is you know there's the, you could you could make the code very hard to read I mean there's no reason why this negative move line couldn't be in there it's just literally running that line and then doing these four statements in sequence but before it actually runs the statement saying, right, how is this, you know, what happened the last test? Did it test it true? If so, I'll do this line. If it didn't, I'll do this line. So as long as there, as long as this not is before this move, and as long as one well, these two don't really matter either, these two can go either way, you know, you could jumble up these instructions and make it quite unreadable. So that's interesting and then we can see here we've got all these other lovely looking parts for later on in the game some logic gates that looks like a knot maybe i don't know or a diode and ah it looks it looks good and we have bridges so thank you again for watching if you did like this video uh, please do drop a like on it if you like and want to see these i'm gonna hopefully do one video Per puzzle I like to break them up like that I mean if you want to watch them all as a kind of big long let's play by all means stick, just jump to the playlist for the for Shenzhen IO and just hit play and make yourself a coffee and do that I have put them all in a playlist and so thanks again for watching um, hopefully these videos will be coming out fairly quickly I'm not gonna um, delay them anything more than I, than I have to, except if I get stuck in them, then there could be huge delays. Anyway, um, thanks again for watching. Bye now.